Welcome to the first Revit Knowledge Base video tip. In this session, what I want to have a look at is creating a very simple railing object and in a subsequent example, a fence object that has been made using an adaptive component and applied using the new divide and repeat features inside of Revit 2013. Starting with the railing object, let's just have a look at this uh, floor object. This floor object has a double curve in it. You can see it's curving this direction and also in this direction as well. This floor object was generated using the surface from a mass object. So if I was to simply go ahead and just tab, you can see there I've still got my mass object in place as a reference. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this object and simply go ahead and select the edge of that double curve. When the edge is selected, I'm now going to come up and use the Divide Path tool up the top here. This will go and divide that edge down into various nodes at certain intervals. You can see over in the properties on the left hand side here that it's currently set to a fixed number. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a maximum distance and I'm going to put just a nominal value of something like 2 meters in there. Over in the project browser over here, you can see there I've got a number of adaptive components already pre-made and loaded in. Just allow me to go and open up one of these so you can have a quick look at what it looks like. I'm not going to go into the details on how to make an adaptive component, but you can see here simply that when I go and grab the nodes at the end there, that the shape of that segment of the railing goes and updates. Just close that. What we do now is go and grab this adaptive component. I'm going to drag it over to the uh, project space. I'm going to hover over the endpoint here, just making sure that on the status bar it says that I've picked up the divided surface, or sorry, the divided path and the point that's on that path. I'm going to select it, and I'm also going to select the next node up that line. Just hitting escape, I'm going to go and select that railing object, and now using the new repeat function inside the massing tools inside of 2013 here, what it'll do, it'll go and repeat that railing component all the way across that double curve there. This is something that you'd have quite a bit of an issue with uh, if you're just using a regular railing tool, but you can see here that using an adaptive component is quite simple. At the end here, just go and grab my other adaptive component called post, drag it over the top, and click to place. And you can see there now, when we go and finish the mass off, that we have a railing that does behave more or less like a railing. And you can see there when I go inside the visibility graphic overrides, that when I go and turn the railing category off, the railing disappears as well. Okay, uh, when we no longer need the mass visible, we simply go back into our visibility graphic overrides here and turn mass off. and also making sure up here that I say show mass by view settings and that will get rid of the mass completely. Another example, let's have a look over here. Just a very simple site. You can see there it has a fairly undulating terrain over the top of it and has a number of fence objects around the outside already. If I go ahead and turn the massing object on by going into the visibility graphic overrides, ticking mass on, you can see there that I've already got a mass object in place. I'm going to select it and I'm going to edit it. And you can see here inside the mass um, component, I already have a reference line already drawn on the surface of this box. This reference line has various nodes as you can see there so I can adjust uh, the, the shape or the overall curvature of that line and basically represents the edge of the topo surface where I'm going to go and place the uh, the fence adaptive component object. In a similar manner as to what I did with the fence, sorry, with the railing object, if I go and select the reference line using the divide path option up here. Okay, once again, just changing some settings over here. I'll use a two meter distance again, just like I did with the, the fence object, uh, sorry, with the railing object. Go and grab my fence post and panel family over in the project browser. I'm going to drag it in, just hovering over the end here, making sure once again that on the status bar that it reads off that it is picking up the node on the divided path, which is what I want, and go and attach it to the next node. 
Let's just zoom out a little bit here. Select that particular adaptive component that I've placed. Then once again, using the repeat function up here, that should go ahead and place it along the entire length of that reference plane, basically representing the edge of the site. I'm now done using the finish mass button here and then turning the mass category back off. There you have it. You can see there that was a fairly simple way to go ahead and place a fence object along a rather undulated edge of a topo surface.